Hey everyone, uh, my daughter and her husband are here visiting. Um, I'm Rob, in case you don't know me. This is David, this is Allison, and their new son, Joseph. So uh, some of you guys have seen him in pictures before, so we thought we'd introduce him here on video once. <laughs> Say hi, Joseph. Okay, at least he's not crying. <laughs> so anyhow, David's a geologist, so today we're going to do a little video on the Mohs scale of mineral hardness. And uh, Allison, you're dismissed. All right. See ya. <laughs> Thank you. All right, David, take it away. Okay. So I know in several of your videos, especially um, when you're using the rock saw and everything, you're talking about the hardness of the rocks. You've talked about the Mohs scale just in general as far as, oh, quartz is a seven on the Mohs scale right. or Petoskey stones are lower on the Mohs scale. So figured I'd just, I just talk I just, a little bit about I've what just, it is and... I've kind of assumed that everybody knows what that is, which they probably don't. So. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, so the Mohs scale was developed by, I think, a German geologist, and it's essentially just... He picked several minerals that uh, um, are different hardness levels, and everything else kind of falls between them. So, and I have several of those here. I don't have the complete set. Um, but, so it starts off, I'm missing talc. Talc would be a one on the Mohs scale. But then we have gypsum. This is a piece of gypsum that I found in Wyoming. Uh, then calcite, which would be very similar to um, many of your fossils that you find, Petoskey stones, a lot of the right. corals, because they're made of calcium carbonate, which is pretty much the same thing as calcite. So that's a three. We have fluorite, which is four. Apatite, which is a five. Feldspar, which is a six. And then we have quartz, which is a seven. Um, and so quartz itself is going to be harder than glass, because glass is... Um, it's also silicon dioxide, so it's made of the same thing as quartz, but quartz has a crystalline lattice that is just a stronger way that those molecules are bound together than the amorphous or just sort of mixed together oh, form okay. that glass is. And then we have corundum, or actually we have topaz in between. The topaz would be eight on the Mohs scale. I don't happen to have that. We have corundum, which is nine. Um, and this would be the same thing as ruby or sapphire. And then we have diamond. And I promised my wife, this is all we are going to see demonstrated with diamond as a 10 because I'm not allowed to scratch anything with her ring. <laughs> That's probably a good plan. <laughs> all right. So, so yeah, I mean, it's just sort of a tool to help identify minerals. Um, if you can figure out the hardness of it, oftentimes field books... Um, identification books for both rocks and minerals talk about the hardness of the rock. So that this is where it comes from. It just either falls between or is similar to one of these minerals, including the topaz or the topaz and the talc that I'm missing. Now, obviously, you're not going to walk around with all these in your pocket. So if you were um, as many as you can get in your pocket, <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, they're they're easier things to uh, to use um, that you might even have around your house. So let's see. Um, so if you were going up to the UP, where there's a lot of different minerals, you're going to a uh, copper mine. Um, these would be some items that you could have in your pocket to help you sort of identify the hardness of the minerals. So one of the things, maybe to backtrack a little bit, is um, when we're talking about hardness, it's can a mineral scratch another mineral or not? So for example, we have the gypsum here and the calcite here. If I try to scratch the calcite with the gypsum, uh, we might see a little bit of powder coming off, but if I brush that away on the calcite, there's no scratch that it's left. So that would just be the um, gypsum rubbing off on the calcite, as opposed to if I do it the other way and I scratch the gypsum, 
that's going to leave a large scratch. And it's right. the same going up, um, going up the scale. So if I were to try to scratch the quartz with the feldspar, it wouldn't leave a scratch on the quartz, but if I were to scratch the feldspar with the quartz, that does leave a scratch. And again, for the harder minerals, it's going to be a little more subtle, a little harder to see, but if you scratch it and then brush away the powder and the scratch is still there, then you know that mineral is harder. And you got to put quite a bit of pressure in to do it mm -hmm. on, the, on the harder ones, especially, yep. right? Yep. Okay, something you mentioned a minute ago is like you tried to scratch one with the other and, and this one looked like a scratch at first, but it was actually this wearing off onto that, mm -hmm. like a pencil on paper kind of. Yes. So one of the things that you use the, as a nail, I'm kind of getting ahead a little bit here, but I've, I've been told and I've done this where I scratch something with the nail and I go, oh, it's scratched. But it was actually the nail leaving a mark like a mm -hmm. pencil on paper, right? Yep. So yeah. you've got to be kind of careful that it's, it's a scratch and not the mineral leaving a mark behind. <laughs> yep, and a good way to do that is to test it the other way around. So if you were trying to scratch the quartz with the nail, or sorry, the nail with the quartz, and well, right now I'm not able to leave a mark on it, but let's say that there was a mark on it, then you can try it the other way, okay. trying to scratch the nail with the quartz. Gotcha. And sure enough, there is a, a mark that that's left there. Right. Okay. So, for your, your field um, hardness identification kit, first thing is actually your fingernail. So a fingernail is about, I think, a two on the Mohs scale. So that should scratch gypsum. So that left a scratch. Depending on your fingernail, you might be able to scratch the calcite, which is a three. I think fingernails might be a two to two and a half. But then by the time you're to fluorite, you're really not going to be able to leave a scratch. So again, you see a mark that's left. That's just my fingernail being left on the uh, mineral. Okay. Um, copper penny um, is a three on the Mohs scale. So again, should be able to scratch the calcite, but not the... Uh, yeah, so, not the uh, um, fluorite. And you can see here there's a little bit of copper that's been left on the fluorite. So this is a three and a penny is a three. It would be questionable whether it would yeah. it may or may not. May or, or may, may not. Very late scratch. Okay. Um, steel nail or a steel knife would be, I believe it's a five or five and a half. Um Quartz is a little bit, I mean, this might be a five, this might be a five and a half, a little bit, five and a half to six, somewhere in there, depending on the glass. So again, um, like I was saying, the quartz should be harder than the glass. Um, yeah, yeah, so that's left a scratch. And another thing you can do, if you're not sure if it's a scratch, if you run your fingernail over it and listen carefully, you can hear... Oh, okay. You can hear or even feel your fingernail catch on it. See if that diamond will scratch this. <laughs> <laughs> Just testing you. <laughs> so yeah, um, so, so that's a few simple things that you can have along with you as you're trying to, if, you, if you're interested in identifying rocks or minerals um, that you can just have in your pocket and, and use with and most things you find on the beach or something, it's not going to be higher than a seven. Right? No, yeah, that's that's why I like having um, the glass, which is more five and a half, six range, would would pretty well cover. Right. So you're not obviously we only have a between the fingernail and then these we count these as one thing, right? We've mm -hmm. got only four yeah. out of the ten, but that's going to give you a rough idea. Yep. Yeah, and with that you can you can really just narrow down what you're looking at because some of these look very similar. I mean, there's some calcite that can be really clear and if there's just like, or I don't know if you happen so, to... Calcite and quartz. Yeah, calcite and quartz can look similar. Like um, you've had several different... Well, actually I think like 
this, for example, this slab, we know is quartz, but it's cloudy and it looks similar to this one. But if I try scratching this with a steel nail, it's left part of the nail there and right. no scratch on that. So you'd be able to pretty easily um, identify, okay, this isn't calcite, it's something harder, so it's probably right. quartz. Okay. Or should we identify a couple other things here? Or sure. Test them? So, do we want to try this on the glass? So that yeah. should probably scratch glass? Should. And this is a more sort of amorphous form of quartz, so it's probably not going to be quite as strong as this, but it did leave a little bit of a scratch. Oh yeah, I can see it there. there. I'm curious if this quartz happens to... Mm, may have broken the there's tip on mark there, is that? Yeah, and there's also a mark here. So the, these are very similar, so they've kind of okay. scratched each other. So yeah, so that's one way to try to figure out what this is. We have a few other slabs here. Come on here. So... Uh, you tell me about this, this one. This is a rock. I found a video. Um, several people have commented on this. Um, this was a couple years ago. Um, it's this green rock with these paler splotches on it. It's really cool looking rock, but um, I found that it was quite soft when I, I tested it. I'm still not exactly sure what it is, but why don't you give that one a test and see how it stacks up. Sure. So we can try first with our fingernail. And it's interesting because I, I Kind of feel my fingernail catching and maybe scratching parts of it, but other parts it's just sliding right over. Okay, we should talk about that, shouldn't we? We've got we've got minerals, and then we've got rocks that are made of minerals. Mm -hmm. And so, like granite, uh, if you guys have watched my videos, you know I don't pick up much granite because it undercuts when you tumble it. So there's softer parts and harder parts, and uh, the softer parts kind of wear away and leave little dents, and they don't get shiny. So, so in a rock, you can have Various hardness. Yep. Yep. Definitely. So then we'll try the penny, which is the next step up. Okay, so I'm seeing here, at least on the lighter part, that it's leaving, or the penny is rubbing off on it. And I don't feel any mark. Yeah, definitely copper color down there. there. Too. Let's try the darker part. So the darker part, I'm seeing more white powder, which makes me think that it's the uh, rock itself that's wearing away. And I can feel a little bit of a uh, scratch there. Right. I, I found the same thing when I, I played around with it. I think mm -hmm. I just used a knife when I tested it. Yep. So we know that the darker part is less than a 2.5, 3 on the, uh, or yeah, 3 on the Mohs scale. So then with our steel nail, so we've got the dark part kind of constrained. So let's see about this. That's a lovely noise, isn't it? <laughs> we don't have a chalkboard to demonstrate that. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. It looks like I might be rubbing off the nail on that lighter part. I suppose I can try doing it the other way to see if I can put a mark in the nail itself. Uh, it's hard to tell. I would I would probably call this pretty close to... Um, so that's a pretty big difference in hardness. Yeah. I haven't tried tumbling this just because I did that test first, which I don't normally do. I don't test mm -hmm. things before I tumble them usually. I just, I just try it and see what happens. But this was such a cool rock, I wanted to see what was going to happen. Yeah, you would definitely be seeing some undercutting right. in that darker spot. Right. Yeah. Right, what else yeah. do we have there? Um, so this looks like a slab of Petoskey stone. Yep, not a great quality Petoskey stone. That's why I'm letting you scratch it up. Yep. <laughs> um, so like I said, this should be right around a three, so where the calcite would be. Um, so the penny might scratch it? penny might scratch it, yeah. Yeah, so it's really not much is happening to either of them. Right. So they'd so be 
pretty similar strength and then maybe to try the knife this time. Oh, obvious scratch. Yes, very <laughs> obvious scratch. So, so yeah, you have to be a little careful with, with Petoskey stone jewelry because of that, because it's mm. not super durable. Yeah. Um, if it's hanging around your neck, it's probably fine. But, um, you know, I know some people make uh, knife scales, uh, this part of the knife out of rock. Mm. I think Petoskey stone would be a fairly poor choice just because if it's in your pocket with keys and yes. stuff, it's probably going to get scuffed up pretty bad. Yep. And then... My this one's one of your favorites. Unikite, yep. yep. So this one should be harder than the um, Petoskey stone here. So let's start with the nail. And not so much. Not really seeing much and, of a scratch there. And from my point of view, I do, I use, um, I tumble the stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. And that tumbles really well, so I know it's fairly hard. Because Petoskey stone's really hard to tumble. Mm -hmm. um, but this tumbles great, so yep. it's, it's probably up there a ways. And kind of in contrast to this one, it really felt the same, like, as I dragged it across this um, vein of epidote here. Right. So, so it's all like a pretty consistent hardness throughout. And then... We'll see if it scratches the glass. Yep. Yep. And I can hear your fingernail on it right there yep. too. But it was very hard to scratch the glass. So it's it's gonna be a little bit closer to the glass. And again, glass isn't quite as high as the quartz is. Um, so yeah, it would be more similar to... I've always thought of this around like six, six and a half, mm -hmm. probably in that range. Yep, which is, I think, right around where glass sits. Okay. So, and then we already tested the quartz, um, which is would be the hardest of these uh, slabs that we have. Right. All right, anything else we should know? Uh, I think that about... That about does it for the Mohs scale. Will all of this be on the test? <laughs> Will there be a test? <laughs> there won't be a test. So, All right. Well, thanks a lot, David. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Hopefully you, you learned something. And uh, we'll try to have David on more to teach us more geology along the way. Thanks.